power supplies provide the backbone for all electronic projects. Without them, none of our circuits would work. These power supplies are all built with different methods, ranging from switching to linear regulation. However, both come with their own disadvantages. So, how can we get around or reduce the effect of said disadvantages? Well, in this video, I will show you how to make a compact power supply that will take a 24 volt DC input and allow you to adjust it all the way down to one and a quarter volts using switching pre-regulation. Let's get designing. First, let's explain the difference between switching and linear regulators, because both have advantages and disadvantages. Linear regulators, like this LM317, are great at creating very clean and stable output voltages, because they change the excess voltage into heat via a transistor. This advantage doubles as a disadvantage, however, because the heat generated means that a lot of power is wasted and large heat sinks are needed. Switching regulators, on the other hand, are a lot more efficient because they switch on and off to achieve the desired voltage, meaning that ideally, only the energy that is needed is actually used. However, this switching comes at a cost of a very noisy output, which for a lot of cases is actually very fine and won't be a problem. However, sensitive applications may have problems with the noise generated from the supply. Now that we know the difference between linear and switching regulators, we can now explore switching pre-regulators. This will allow us to have the benefits of both linear and switching regulators in one. Basically, this pre-regulator works by using the more efficient switching regulation to regulate down most of the input voltage. Then, linear regulation will be used at the end to provide a clean and stable output voltage. Overall, we are able to save power and use smaller heat stings while still maintaining that nice linear output. Let's start with the linear regulator because it is much simpler. Let's use this LM317 for the design. Looking at the functional block diagram, we can see the basic makeup of the circuit. Since it is driven by an op amp, it is very easy to simply drive the adjust pin to whatever voltage we want, plus 1.25 volts. For example, we can provide 5 volts to the adjust pin, and since the op amp wants to keep the inverting and non-inverting inputs equal, it will make the output 5 plus 1.25 volts, or 6.25 volts on the output. This means that we can drive it with a simple voltage divider circuit, or even from just a microcontroller. However, we will keep it analog for this video and just use a voltage divider. It is also worth noting that we require at least 3 volts between the input and output of the linear regulator in order to ensure stability of the output. Now we can focus on the switching regulator. In this case, I will use the LM2576 adjustable version. If you have watched my previous video on buck converters, you should have a good understanding of this topic. I will give a quick review for those who are still unfamiliar with buck converters. This is the basic schematic of a buck converter, and it basically works by charging the coil up while the switch is closed. When the switch is open, the coil will discharge through the load. The diode is in place so that the coil can discharge through itself, but it also prevents the voltage source from sorting it to the ground. This IC simplifies the whole process by taking care of the switching and feedback system for us. And we see that it works after following the example schematic. Now we can connect both regulators together to form a pre-regulated output. However, this still has one problem. If we adjust the linear regulator, we also have to adjust the switching regulator. So it would be much better if the switching regulator always adjusted to stay just above 3 volts above the desired output voltage. We can use a method of pre-regulation called tracking to solve this problem. Basically, we need to make sure that the 1.23 volts at the feedback pin on the switching regulator is derived from output voltage that is 3 volts higher than the linear regulator's output. The most common way to do that, it seems, is with a PMP transistor and an emitter follower configuration. How it works is that the output from the linear regulator will drive the base and produce a voltage about 0.6 volts higher than the emitter. This will create a voltage difference between the emitter and the output, creating a current through the resistor. This current is carried all the way through to the second resistor, which senses the current and creates a voltage drop across it. The regulator will then adjust the output voltage until the second resistor generates a 1.23 volt on the feedback. We can select the value of the first resistor to manipulate how much current will flow, and therefore manipulate the voltage on the feedback. I chose a 22K resistor because it gives me a voltage about 3.5 volts higher on the output. 
you should choose a larger or smaller resistor depending on how much of a difference you want on the regulator. And after a quick test, we can see that the regulator will always generate a voltage that is about 3.5 volts higher than the output of the linear regulator. We need to add one more protection feature, and that is overcurrent protection. Basically, we need to set a hard limit on how much current that is allowed to run through our supply so that an external mistake doesn't accidentally destroy it. To figure out the current that is running through the supply, we can use a small resistor to sense the current. Basically, this resistor will have a small voltage drop proportional to the current running through it, thanks to Ohm's law. The resistor I chose is this 5 watt 100 milliohm resistor. So running some calculations, we can see that with a current of 1 amp, we will have a voltage drop of about 0.1 volts. While we do have a valid voltage drop across the resistor, it is far too low for it to be practically measured. So we can use a differential op amp to amplify the voltage drop. In this case, I will use the common LM358 dual op amp. I use the classic differential op amp circuit with a gain of 50 set by the 1K and 50K resistors to amplify the voltage drop of 0.1 volts to 5 volts. Then I use the LM393 comparator IC to detect an overcurrent based on the output from the op amp. The comparator's non-inverting input will have a 5 volt reference given by a Zener diode. Therefore, when the comparator detects a voltage higher than the set voltage from the sensing resistor, the comparator will output to ground. The output is then passed to this SR latch, whose output is connected to the on-off pin on the switching regulator. I also added a capacitor to the latch just to make sure that it will always default to setting the supply to off after the initial power-up. After setting this idea up on the breadboard, we can see that it really works. Remember, if you're confused, the entire schematic for the supply can be found in the description. Now it's time to remove the uncertainty of a breadboard and assemble the circuit using solder. This time, I will be putting it onto a PCB because of its complexity. And so, after putting together the schematic as a PCB and waiting for it to be delivered, I soldered together all the components onto the board. After running a quick test to make sure that everything is working as expected, I found that my design did not properly work at all, so I made a new one and soldered it together too. This design worked thankfully. To make this project a little more usable, I decided to put it into a housing. And for this project, I chose this aluminum case to put the board into. To fit all the parts externally, I simply drilled holes to make them fit, with a little bit of filing when necessary. I then tested the supply one more time to make sure that everything is working before closing it up. Let's quickly test the supply's capabilities to see if pre-regulation is a viable option when you want a clean, yet efficient output signal. First, we can see that we can go all the way up to 21 volts and down to 1.25 volts. That's pretty good with a 24 volt input. The output will shut off if the current goes above 1 amp, for example if we short it together by accident. And finally, the oscilloscope shows that the output is extremely clean despite having a switching regulator inside. So, while this pre-regulation method is much more complex than just having either a linear or a switching regulator by themselves, it really makes up for this complexity in both its efficiency and its very low output noise. So, if you're looking to build a power supply of your own, I highly recommend this design if you're able to understand how everything works. If you're not so sure, I would recommend sticking to making a purely linear design. By the way, stay tuned to see a future linear power supply video on this channel. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing so that you can see my other videos. Have a good one!